South Korea that's been on the front foot. Can Australia finish the half on top? Oh, no! Oh, my goodness! Massimo Luongo! First blood in the Asian Cup final to Australia! The AFC Asian Cup Australia 2015 most valuable player is player number 21 for Australia, Massimo Luongo. The Aussie who once starred for his nation signed to one of the biggest clubs in England and had the footballing world at his feet, just seemingly disappeared from the world footballing map in an instant. Now 31, this is the story of a player who has been persistent and has rebuilt his career when it all seemed lost. Here is the story of Massimo Luongo. Born on the 25th of September 1992 to Italian and Indonesian parents, in the heart of Sydney, Massimo Luongo's life was destined to be intertwined with the game of football from an early age. It was clear Luongo was an incredibly gifted footballer. Featuring at Waverley College, the fleet-footed midfielder tore up players three or four years his elder in just year nine. A member of the youth team for Arpia Leichhardt for four seasons, it wasn't long before Luongo garnered international attention. Scouts caught wind of a skillful midfielder that possessed the technique that most Australian professional footballers lacked. He took the leap of faith in pursuit of his footballing dreams and flew to England to trial with English Premier League club Tottenham Hotspur. Luongo impressed in his trial and was signed immediately at just 16 years of age into the Spurs Academy, where he would face his first real challenge. At the age of 18, he was on the fringes of the first 11. Luongo was amongst world-class talent like Gareth Bale and Luka Modric, a giant step up in class to what he was previously used to. He found the transition incredibly challenging, saying every time I took a touch, I got tackled. The pace was so fast. The only thing I could do was run, tackle and work hard. Initially a creative attacking midfielder, Luongo would have to transition into more of a holding role to improve his chances to feature in the first team. Massimo felt miles away from the first team though and was reluctant to train with the stars because of how behind he felt he was. He was isolated living across the globe as a teen all by himself and with the competitive environment there was little time to make friends. The Aussie would feature for Spurs once professionally in the League Cup, but would unfortunately miss a penalty in the penalty shootout, resulting in the club being knocked out by Stoke City. <laughs> yeah, he's okay, of course. If Pavlochenko had scored, he wouldn't have had to take one, would he? He'd been, been all over. But uh, so that's how it goes, you know. He would feature prominently for the academy before he was shipped out on loan in hopes for more first team football. He'd move to Ipswich Town for the 2012-13 season, where he would achieve a couple milestones featuring the first professional league game and would score his first professional goal. The loan would be cut short though as Longo was not selected for five straight weeks with Ipswich deciding to terminate the agreement. Obviously a setback, Luongo would once again go out on loan, this time to English third tier side, Swindon Town. It was here at Swindon Town where the now 20 year old gained some momentum. The midfielder was finally given some stability, relied upon as the anchor where he would score 6 goals and 44 league appearances during his first season, and ultimately would earn a permanent deal to the club for a transfer fee of £400,000. The following campaign saw Massimo reach new heights, earning praise for his performances and contributing to Swindon's journey to the playoff final at Wembley, where they just fell short. It was during this period where we saw the rise of Luongo on the international stage. Ange Postacoglu, the Australian coach at the time, would select Luongo due to his consistent game time at Swindon and saw the upcoming 2014 World Cup as a chance for the youngster to gain some experience. Although Luongo would not feature at the tournament, his stature within the Australian setup had only increased as Luongo became a regular in Postacoglu's starting side, heading into the 2015 Asian Cup on Aussie soil. Luongo went from a highly touted prospect on the Aussie footballing scene to a national star in the space of a month. His rise was astronomical as he led a soccer side that was facing the loss of most of its heralded golden generation. Luongo led the tournament with four assists and had two goals across the tournament, no bigger than this long-range belter against South Korea in the Asian Cup final. Can Australia finish the half on top? Luongo! Australia would win this final, their first Asian Cup in the country's history, with Luongo taking out the Asian Cup's Most Valuable Player Award. Massimo was far and away the best player of the tournament, outshining names like Hugh Min Son, Tim Cahill and Kasuki Honda. Luongo finished the 2015 season with a third place finish for the Asian Player of the Year Award and was celebrated domestically, being selected in the PFA League One Team of the Year. Luongo returned to England, expecting his agent's inbox to be flooded with offers after his outstanding tournament. Whilst he had aspirations to make the move to a top European league like the English Premier League, the offers he was receiving were largely coming from Asia. 
a move that he did not want to make at the time. It became clear to Luongo that his Asian cop display had made little waves over in Europe, and although he would still make a jump moving from the third division from Swindon Town to Queen's Park Rangers in the English Championship, it wasn't as big as he originally hoped. His first season in the Championship came as a bit of a reality check, as the sheer toll of the grueling schedule and physicality became apparent quickly to Luongo. To combat this, he focused on getting stronger and more durable, and with this saw an uptick in his midfield play. Luongo's 2015 performances earned him a spot on the 2015 Ballon d'Or long list, where he saw himself named next to the likes of Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo. Although never likely to actually win the honour, the nomination highlighted how special 2015 was for Luongo. The Australian's five-year stint at QPR was full of quality as he won the club's Player of the Year in 2018 and was also given the captain's armband. This interview with the coach Ian Holloway proves how influential Luongo had become for QPR. He could play for Barcelona. I believe he could play for Man City. And we are not the same team without him. I honestly believe he is as good a player as I've ever had in my career so far. It was a slap in the face then, when Luongo went without a single appearance at the 2018 World Cup as Brett Van Marwijk stuck with an aging, experienced squad. It was from here Luongo got lost in the footballing wilderness. Massimo would suffer another significant twist in 2019 when he joined Sheffield Wednesday. After getting through 27 games his first season, in which they were relegated because of a points reduction caused by breaking financial fair play rules, it was in his second season he suffered a series of injuries, including a severe hamstring tear, concussion knee and ankle injuries. This meant he would only feature a total of 12 games across the season and had now drifted out of Australian Socceroos selection. Luongo would not feature again for the Socceroos during his entire spell and labelled his constant issues with fitness and injuries as a nightmare. He would have a solid second half to the 2021 season but knew it was time to move on transferring to Middlesbrough to start the 22 season. His time in Middlesbrough was not any better, although now fit and available Luongo, who had played almost 200 games in the championship to this point, couldn't break the club's first team side. Luongo would go five months without a single appearance before he and both Borough decided to mutually terminate the deal. Luongo's career had hit a genuine crossroads. He was now in his prime, but had gone almost four years without an appearance for his national team, and those hopes and dreams of possibly playing in one of Europe's top leagues seemed lost. Luongo had offers to return to Australia but chose to back himself and continue to compete in England, moving to Ipswich Town, the team he had joined a decade earlier. Chances come few and far between in football, and with Massimo entering his 30s, he knew he would have to take any chance that presented itself. Injuries saw Luongo get that opportunity, and he impressed head coach Kieran McKenna, slotting into the midfield comfortably. He has been a revelation since his winter arrival in IP1. The style of play suited Luongo as he helped Ipswich return to the championship in his first season at the club. It was a crucial six months for the Australian as this looked to be his last opportunity to prove himself in English football. His stellar play secured him a contract extension till the 2024 season. Luongo, who was unable to get a single minute in the championship a season earlier with Burrow, became the heart of the Ipswich Town midfield as he flourished in McKenna's attacking system. Newly promoted Ipswich Town, just 11 games into the season, sits amongst the automatic promotion spots in second place. Luongo has been integral to the club's resurgence with his own form typified by this banger he scored just a few weeks ago. Dinks it towards the back post and pairs, punches away, and it's far as Luongo! With Luongo's Australian career seemingly dead in the water, his return to form has been rewarded with a call-up to the Socceroos, his first since the 2019 Asian Cup. With Ipswich Town's inspired start to the 2023 season, they are in with a genuine chance of being promoted to the Premier League. This might mean that we see Luongo realise those Premier League dreams that seemed gone not so long ago. If you enjoyed the video, press the like button. If you want more Sporting News Australian content, subscribe and comment down below what you would like to see next.